Okay. All right. So here we go. The, the, the major headline, 800 million more in aid and more coming now, which puts the United States, based on my calculation, at 3.3, roughly, billion dollars. Mm -hmm. 56 days into this war, Dana. Uh, he also said that uh, there would be a ban on Russian ships coming into American uh, American mm -hmm. ports. Uh, this is something that Europe has already done. So we are second to mm -hmm. that, but that is a significant move nonetheless. And I think the other bit of news there is on Title 42. He said there's no decision, which seemed to suggest in the next five and a half weeks, four and a half weeks or so, that I'm, it could go either way. I mean, that, that, that's what I take away from that answer. Let's see what the CDC says. Yeah. All right. Uh, Carl Rove is uh, here. He listened to the president's speech there. Get your initial mm -hmm. reaction, Carl. Well, I'd add one more uh, big item to your list of, of, of news items in the speech, and that is that he's going to go to Congress next week and ask for a supplemental budget appropriation for Ukraine for not only military assistance, but also economic assistance, uh, saying that he had, uh, had exhausted the existing authority voted, to, vo voted by the Congress, so he's going to go back for more. So mm -hmm. I think that was another important thing. Mm. Carl, the White House, notwithstanding the question about MiGs or jets, although we are supplying parts for airplanes inside Ukraine today, but not the physical jet that Zelensky wants, notwithstanding, they've been consistent in saying, if they ask for it, we give it to them. Um, depending on the needs of the Ukrainian military, which, which seems to answer the question that we will satisfy their needs for the day depending on where the war is. Well, I, I mean, rewind in time. If you, if you thought Putin was a bad man in early February, a lot of this stuff should have been going into Ukraine then, as opposed to now in late well, April into May. Well, I, look, I'd go back, if we're, if we're going to be critical, let's go back and be even more critical, because remember, last June, before an international meeting with Putin, President Biden paused U.S. military assistance to Ukraine and did not begin to renew it until November. So we had June, July, August, September, October, and then beginning in mid-November, we began the resupply of, of their military needs again. So that, that five-month over five month period of where we were sitting on the sidelines could be very problematic. But having said that, we do need to give them everything they need and and as fast as we possibly can. It's it's boggling, mind boggling to me as to why we're laying out what we're giving them. I mean, we've been telling, you know, this latest tranche of 800 million includes 155 millimeter uh, artillery uh, pieces. Plus, the president today said we're sending 144,000 uh, tactical rounds. For every Russian tank, we're sending 10 anti-tank missile systems. I mean, it, it, maybe maybe he's doing that for domestic purposes. I'm not certain it's very useful to to do it from, from the perspective of telling the Russians what we're doing. Well, it, you picked up on something that I noticed, and that was that in many of his speeches, and not just on this topic, but let's stick to this one. He'll give a laundry list of the uh, statistics and the numbers. And he buries the lead. You know, at the end, when he's asked a question about Mariupol, he says, Mr. Putin better not do that, right? I'm like, why don't you lead with that? Where is the big overarching thing? Because it does seem like we are playing whack-a-mole after Zelensky asks us for things, not getting ahead of it, and not using the full weight of the office of the President of the United States. I couldn't agree more. I mean, look, what was missing from this? What the American people want to, want to know and hear from their president is, why does this matter? Why are we doing this? Why is victory for the Ukrainians important to the United States? And if he wants to sustain public support, he's got to go explain that. And, and, and frankly, today, there was a, I, I got a little nervous when he said, you, you know, uh, our object is we don't want the Russians to take any more territory. No, our object ought to be for Ukrainians to win so that the rest of the world does not continually need to look over their shoulder at Putin moving further into Europe by, by force and by, uh, by, by also by trying to humble his, his neighbor. So, yeah, they put numbers in there rather than starting with and ending with why is this important for America to do. I'd make one other observation from a communications perspective, and I do with, so with some trepidation because of, of, I'm on a panel with a great presidential communicator, and that, that <laughs> is why, why, 
Why is it that we jam everything together? You know, I think they're afraid of, you know, you know, he could have said, you know, supplemental made it to the purpose of today. He could have said tomorrow we're going to have a refugee program aimed at the children. I, I, my sense is they want to try and avoid talking about Ukraine. So they jam everything into one day rather than explaining it to the American people yeah. as they as they deal with each one of these things. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think they're concerned that if they talk about Ukraine too much, it's not going to allow them to talk about the Build Back Better agenda and universal pre-K and the child tax credit and the free family paid leave and blah, 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 yep. all of which is going nowhere, but which they think is important for their political uh, chances. Always a kitchen November. sink speech. Everything is thrown in. Uh, yeah. Just one more thing. He said Putin won't control all of Ukraine. All of you. I mean, yeah. we're going to be picky on language, Carl. I mean, yeah. that, that, that's a concession of sorts. Yeah. All of Ukraine. That's like a minor no, I, incursion. You know, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is why we need to say our object is Ukraine to win, not to not to sort of, you know, to suggest to Putin that we're willing to it seems allow like him under, to continue It seems to, like to some nibble. in that White House are undecided on that. Imagine right? that they will be um, walking something back uh, by the time they get on the plane as he heads to Oregon today. Carl, thank you. Thanks, Carl. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.